And if I go over there and she's doing this and I want her to do this, and if I just grab her hand and do that, to me that makes her feel like she's done it wrong, that she couldn't do it right. And when I have to fix her, it pulls the energy down, 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 down. What I'd rather just, even if I have to say it four times in different ways to get the hand over there, there's an interesting energy that we're building in communication, verbal communication, that entire time. And I don't ever fix anybody. I'll often take a photograph when the dress is not quite right because I don't want to break the energy. When I've got everything, you know, oh, with the dress, I'll just take it anyway, and I might redo the photograph later or even pose it again. But she would never know. Awareness, respect, and sensitivity. So that whole, like, wooden doll mannequin thing, and I know that seems a really brutal way to say it, but it happens when I watch photographers work all the time uh, at a workshop, for instance. They'll come in, and I'm not meaning to be critical. I'm, I'm saying that this is an interesting part of my own process. They'll come in and it just click, 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 click. Doesn't even want to know the name of the model. You know, there's no feedback. There's no, you know, and walk away without even saying thank you sometimes. It's really interesting. That is a very rigid interaction between photographer and model. You are my model. You do what I say. That doesn't work for me. So being extremely hyper aware of her, and I'm overly aware of people. I think that's one of the things that helps me do what I do, is I'm really sensitive to her, and I care. Respect, that I respect her, and that I know that she is 75% of the photograph. It's not me. It's me watching her. And sensitivity, being really sensitive, watching the little things, watching the little expressions on her face. If I can see if I ask her to do something, she does it, but there's a little tension in the face. I can see it's uncomfortable that maybe she's, it hurts, or she doesn't like it. Or I can see in her face when I, can, I know we're headed somewhere really good. There's intention, you know, there's intensity, joy even. I'm going to push that. So it's about powerful spoken language. For instance, um, if someone's in a pose, um, my pace is very slow, first of all. I don't, I'm not high energy when I photograph. I'm very slow and methodical, and my voice is like this the whole time. I speak very slowly, very softly. I, my words are long and linguid. Linguid? Is that a word? Yeah, it's a word now. Um, and it helps to set the mood, right? Um, secondly, the words I use are important, the words themselves. So instead of like, tip your head, I'll say, let your head fall slowly, 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 like it's heavy to the right. And I get a really different result than, you know, then we have this. And she's really interested in this idea of heaviness and things. So those words are important in trying to get the end result. My tone of voice, soft. My pace is very slow. Confidence is really important, too. So while I'm not that high-energy photographer, they know, I feel like they know, that I know what the heck I'm doing, and I know where I'm headed, and that I'm not wishy-washy in there. So that comes from not breaking poses that I don't like. They start to believe me. The whole time they believe me. Choice of words, visual connection, a look into her eyes. That's, a lot of photographers are almost afraid to do that. It's kind of scary sometimes, actually, because it's confrontational, and they have to trust me. Mannerism and genuineness. My mannerisms are important, too. If I'm high energy or tense, she will be, too. If my mannerisms are slow and gentle and I use my hands in this way, and I think, you know, fall, and I use, rather than tip, if I'm moving slowly, she will also move slowly. 